What's up, divas and divos? So it's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. It's actually super late here, okay? Well, it's not real late, but um, let's just say it is me scoot over. I'm trying to get into frame. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so it is 10 oh five all right normally i do this early in the day but i have been like so busy lately i haven't been going to sleep till like four in the morning five in the morning editing videos um it has just been really really hectic i'm not really sure why it's taking me like so long to edit a video well i really did not know because um basically my macbook pro was super slow and i really like to use it more than my imac desktop only because i don't like to be constricted in my room and you guys know like i did complain about it getting hot in here and it's not as hot as it used to be thank god but i just you know what i like to be downstairs i don't always want to be in my room like i don't want to sleep in well i have to sleep in here i don't these are the things that i I find myself doing sleeping here, bathing here, doing my makeup in here, recording my videos in here, editing my videos in here. So I spend a lot of time in my bedroom and I really don't want to be in here all the time. So I try to alleviate that by being downstairs and I went and I purchased an M I'm a, I'm a MacBook pro from Amazon. Like probably like, I want to say like, gosh, probably like back in, probably like 10 months ago, nine months ago, like 10 months ago. And um, it was working really good and stuff. And then, um, and I bought it used, of course, it was the latest, um, the last of the, t the last of the um, basically ones that have the um, DVD drive in it. So those are like the best ones to get, um, especially since it's the last one, because you cannot upgrade it. You can't change the hard drives on like the newer models. So, you know, I didn't know that until recently i just bought it because you know it was used and it was a decent price well i found myself like really trying to struggle with you know basically um editing so i finally gave in like a week and a half ago when it took me like three hours to edit like a 10 minute video the damn thing kept freezing i was sitting there just crying not even crying but i was on the verge of crying and all i had to do was just take my ass upstairs but i just really didn't want to you know when you determined to do something you determined to do it so that was my determination to do it downstairs well i finally took it in and i got it upgraded um the problem was it was like a, it was a four gigabyte um macbook pro and um and it needed just like a newer hard drive instead of like the spinning ones it needed it a to be an ssd or sdd something like that well anyway i upgraded it to a 16 gigabyte so it's super fast and i got a newer hard drive so that's super fast so i'm happy about that i got it back today and i can go back downstairs to editing but i'm still like I don't know why I'm so behind lately. Um, I just have so many things to do and I'm like really kicking myself in the ass about it. So yeah, but other than that, um, there's really nothing really too much going on. Um, you guys know if you want a real talk, you can always send me one to muffinus my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that I know it's a real talk. I have finally gotten caught up with all of my real talk videos, which are amazing, which is great because I normally I always do them. Sometimes they'll be like a, a two weeks behind, sometimes three. Now I am freshly done. So please somebody have some drama in your life and send me some bullshit that's going on some it's not bullshit but just send me something i don't care you know what i'm saying send me something we can definitely talk about it so make sure you send me a real talk try to get them in before um tuesday morning because or at least at least by tuesday of 12 noon pacific standard time because that way which is 3 p.m on the eastern side i could make sure to have it done for you guys for that wednesday so yes please send me in some of your real talk um, because I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And also I just like to talk and I like to be able to communicate with you guys and just give you my opinion. Maybe my, maybe my opinion may not be all that great all the time, but you know, we are all entitled to our opinions and we're all here to help one another. So yeah, I have a one earring. The reason why I'm so late on doing real talk today is because I had to do a fashion try on haul. So I had to do two of those with my daughter, Nay. I had to pick up my, um, my, my MacBook. I had to go to Sam's club. Um, and I actually woke up today at like 10.30, which was so late for me, but I didn't go to sleep until like 5.30. So I have been like really, really like lacking in the sleep department. 
And then on the 10th of July, I do leave again for two weeks to go back to New York. So I'll be with my mom for one week and then my husband and my son for the next week. And then I'll be back home. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be tired and I'm probably not going to do real talk then if I have any real talk to do. But if I don't, then I, I just, I'm probably not going to do it. So if you don't see real talk for like a week or two, you know, that's because I'm on vacation and I really do feel like I need to be like not recording any videos. Like I will definitely edit some, but I'm not going to record any videos. At least I'm going to try not to. But right now I'm sitting here in my PJs. So, you know, I'm chilling. We're going to get into this real talk real quick because I absolutely want to edit a video, which is this one here. And I also want to um, edit another video. So you guys, let's get into this real talk. Okay. Huh? 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 Okay. Hello, April. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, April. I love your personality and I'm addicted to your channel and real talk. So keep up the good work. P.S. Tinky Man is so darn cute. I love his little break-ins to say hello to all of us on camera. Now, Mrs. April, I need some help on how to break some news to my parents. But first, let's, but, but first, let me describe them to you. Let me describe my parents to you. My dad has always been the know-it-all, his way or no way type of person. And if I have ever started to question anything, I was told I was wrong before I could even finish my sentence. My mom is the super religious parent. She's very kind, but anytime I try to have a woman-to-woman -woman conversation with her, the subject always reverts back to religious beliefs, and I can never have an honest conversation with her. She went so far as to say I was living in sin when I moved into the home I bought with the man I was marrying one month prior to our scheduled marriage date. So growing up, I've never felt I could have or express my own opinion. That was my opposite of what my parents felt. And this has carried over into my adulthood. As for my husband, we've always had a fun relationship, but our love life has never been on the same page, if you get what I mean. I was always the person to initiate, and if I was lucky, I would get lucky every few months. Then that spread out to once or twice every year. Well, on a drunken night, Years after I was married and I got pregnant, we had a child. After that, I really started to see how absent my husband was. My parents wouldn't my parents would take care of our child when we were both at work. So they were at our home a lot. And when they would point out and when they would point out things to me about my husband, I would always defend him because that's what spouses do. But eventually I got tired of defending him. I got tired of doing everything and not even being met in the middle. I got tired of crying myself to sleep for being rejected again. After several years of this, I couldn't sleep in the same bed, so I moved into another room. My dad told me to ignore my husband because my son needed a man, a dad, and we had a beautiful home together, shaking my head. And wouldn't you know, I slept in that room by myself for a year until I finally worked up the courage to file for divorce. I moved out a few months later and I've been on my own and in my own place for a year now. Now here's the problem, Mrs. April. My divorce is, isn't final, but I've met someone who makes me very happy. So how the heck do I tell my religious mom and my know-it-all father that I'm dating again without this turning into a big fight because I will have a very hard time holding my tongue. I'm afraid they will both say they need to meet him first rolling my eyes, and that I need to wait longer. While I want them to know this person, they will only want to meet him so they can judge him. Miss April, I know my divorce isn't final yet, but I think I've waited long enough to find someone else. It's been over seven years since I've had relations with my soon-to-be ex, over two years from sleeping in the same bed with him, and I've been moved out on my own for a year. I want to be respectful because I love my parents through and through, but I know there is a high chance of us fighting over this. Thanks in advance for your advice. So we're going to call her Barbara because she didn't leave a name. And my mouth is so fucking dry. I don't know why my mouth is so dry these days. So basically... You know what? I feel kind of bad. First of all, Barbara, thank you so much for the comments, the compliments on Tinky Man. That is my buddy. 
he's sleeping right now. So unfortunately, he's not going to come in here and say hello to everybody. But he will soon. We will me and him will be doing a video soon. So you guys will have to make sure to catch him on that. Um, so basically Barbara, I, you know what? I feel sorry, for, not even sorry for Barbara, but I feel like, I feel, I feel empathy for her. I feel bad for her because you know what I'm saying? She, here it is. She has grown up in a household that is religious. Her mom is super religious and her dad is a know-it-all. And either way, when she tried to talk to her mom, having a woman to woman, her mom is just basically bringing it back to the religion. And her father is one who just... It is what it is. I say what it is. If it's raining outside and you say, um, if it's raining outside, you tell me it's raining and I say, no, it's not. It's sunny. It, that's what it is. Okay. He's just one of those type where, you know, it is what I say it is. And first of all, those are the hardest people to get along with and the hardest people to even try to agree to disagree with. You know what I'm saying? Like you got somebody that's always like, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. And when they know they are wrong, they still right. When you point out they're wrong, they still right. And that could be so fucking hard to deal with. Like I wouldn't be able to just function around somebody like that. And not only that, but the super religious portion of it too. Like, don't get me wrong. I have my beliefs as well, just like everybody else. But sometimes a lot of times I feel like religion is brought into like conversation that is just like a basic conversation, a woman to woman conversation. Certain things do not need to be brought into the conversation. So this makes it hard for Brenda, um, Barbara to be able to communicate with her parents. Now she grown. She has been with her husband for probably over seven years. And like I said, they bought a home together. They, they purchased a the home. They moved into the home together a month prior to, you know, getting married. Her mother thought it was sinful. Okay. You have your opinions and I have mine. All right. Not only that, you know, in the relationship with her husband, she was the one that had to constantly initiate, you know, the sexual part. And when she would initiate it, she wasn't getting lucky all the time. Like she said, she was getting lucky every couple of months and then sometimes once a year. And then it got to the point where her father was saying, just ignore him because your son needs a father and just sleep in another room. Like, so she slept in another room by herself. Let me tell you something. First of all, I don't mind initiating shit, but let me tell you something. I'll be damned if I'm going to initiate the shit and constantly get rejected. That's like to me an embarrassment. Okay. Like I feel ridiculed and I would feel embarrassment. So I can totally feel the point where, you know what I'm saying? Barbara then decided to move into the next room, but it's still, even if she moved into the next room, it's still heartbreaking and it still hurts because there's a part of her that still loved this man. You know what I'm saying? And here it is. She's putting up with his bullshit. I'm, I, I'm finding it hard to believe that any man, I mean, it, it's probably so, but you know what I'm saying? How do you you go like having sex once or twice a month and then maybe once every few months then once a year nigga what are you doing are you secretly gay are you secretly gay or do you have somebody else somewhere i mean it's got to be one of the two but she got the courage and she finally decided to file for divorce and kudos to her for that because listen even though sex is not everything in a relationship that's that's the truth it's not everything but it does make up part of the relationship and when you and your husband are you know laying down in that same bed you know you want to spend husband and wife time and for you to be rejected is like what did I do wrong? Are you not attracted to me? You know what? As women, we can think all type of things if we were rejected by someone that we love. Like, I know if I was rejected, I would think like all type of things. And it may not even be something, but you know what? As a woman, we are emotional creatures and even men are emotional creatures too. And they might feel some type of way about being rejected as well. But as women, we come into thinking all types of scenarios of why we was rejected. Does our pussy stink? Does our hair look ugly? Am I fat? Does my breath stink? Is he fucking with somebody else? Is he not attracted to me anymore? Is he gay? What? It's all type of things. Does he not like the cooch? Does he not like the way I do it? It could be all type of things. Okay. And some men will probably feel like, oh, you sleeping on me? Or you got somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So being rejected is like something hard to deal with. And for her to cope with that and still be in the household with him and then, you know what I'm saying, sleep in the same bed with him and then move into the next room girl, you super duper strong because I would have just been spazzed the fuck out and been like, what the fuck is the problem? But you know what? That's neither here nor there. She, she, she filed for divorce and then she moved out 
good for her. She moved out. She's been in her own. She's been in her own place for over a year now. So she deserves happiness. And even though her paperwork isn't final yet, her divorce isn't final yet, you know, some people might be like, oh, she can't date nobody. They separated. They're legal, legally separated. So whatever she want to do, she want to meet someone else, That that's fine. You know what I'm saying? If you and your husband have already established the fact that you are going to be divorced from each other, then by all means, go out there and find happiness. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know. Happiness will bite you in the ass right then and there when you left that motherfucking house and you're going to pass it up because the papers ain't Final. Let me tell you something. Somebody has been making you miserable for over seven fucking years and they ain't even trying to meet you halfway in the motherfucking middle. Then why even keep continuing to go on to the other side with them and try to continuously pull them halfway to the middle? Like, let me tell you something. You grown, sweetheart, and I understand that that's your parents and you love them and you have respect for them. However, you grown. And this is the problem with people sometimes. We have to stop worrying about what everybody think about us. Because regardless of what we think or we do, we never going to please nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, we really do need to stop trying to please everybody. Like, you can please a whole group of motherfuckers and then you got another group over here that don't like what you're doing, which could be, actually, you ain't do re doing really much of nothing, but they don't like you. And what you're going to sit around and worry about trying to please them too and please this group right here? Girl, listen, you will be fucking tired, worn out, fucking exhausted, and stressed the fuck out. And I'm going to give you a prime fucking example, okay? So yesterday, you know, I go on my video, um, Batty Hair, and, you know, everybody liked the video, left their comments, and I replied to the comments. But just one person, one person had the, da the audacity, and I don't really give a fuck, was like, what was it? I have a sad life, basically. She said, such a sad life. And I'm like, you know, I didn't lash out at her. I'm thinking, maybe it was a typo. Let me ask her. I, I said, sad life. Um, what makes you think that I have a sad life? What makes you think my life is so sad? Do I look unhappy? So she comes back with, you know, um, um, all you, all you do in show is for attention. Toodles. I said, well, it seems like you a little bit bitter because you're the one looking for the attention since you left your negative comment. I said, you know what? I'm not here to please everyone. And I'm damn sure not worried about pleasing you. Okay. I said, you unhappy because I'm happy, you miserable. Maybe if you smile a little bit more, your life will be bit, a little bit better, but you can't try to bash somebody for their happiness. Then, you know, she commented back with, I am smiling. So basically, you know, I said, you know, I left my long spiel and let her know, you know, but like I said, I ain't here to please everybody. I'm not here to please everybody. You know, she might've got her little one or two thumbs up, you know, and here's my thing. I used to be so concerned about pleasing motherfuckers and pleasing motherfuckers, but now I'm to the point where, bitch, I don't give a fuck if I don't please you. I don't please you. I don't please all of you over there, group A and group B, okay? I'm not about to wear myself thin trying to please every motherfucking body. And it's sad because some people like to see other people miserable because they punk ass is miserable. Like, let, let me tell you something. Sometimes I will get in a zone to where if somebody is to leave me a comment because they don't like something I did or said, or they just don't like me in general, I'll go back and forth with them. Only because you know why? Girl, I ain't got shit to do. And sometimes I like being petty. And on top of that, I'm going to get you mad. You're not, you're not getting me mad on this side of the computer I'm going to get you mad, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and forth with you just to be petty, just to upset you and get your blood pressure high. That's what the fuck I like to do sometimes, just be petty with you. I might curse you out or whatever. But yesterday, it was like, you know something? This bitch ain't even worth my time, but I'm going to let her know something real calm and co collective, and I'm going to give her some knowledge to think about. It. And if she take it, she take it. If she don't, she don't. Either way, I don't give a fuck because I'm not here to please this motherfucker. And either way... Bitch, I'm going to continue to fucking show out and be who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that I show and I do, it's a hair review. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Get on the fucking computer, um, upload the video, and just say, here's the wig. Here's the wig. It's brown and it has combs. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, either you're going to complain about that or you're going to complain about I did the review and I showed you how to put it on or whatever. Either way... You can't please every motherfucker in the world. And so with that being said, you just got to step the fuck off and be who the fuck you be and make sure that you happy. Because I guarantee you, not everybody going to worry about your happiness and not everybody is here to make a motherfucker happy. So let me tell you, 
I use a prime example. When I had got separated from my husband, my mom, she was, you know, she was happy at how she was happy that I, I was, I left, but she wasn't happy. You know, it was just like a really on bad terms with me and him. And basically I, when we got me and him got back together, I didn't want to tell her. I didn't want to tell like a lot of people, not because I was ashamed, but just because I was worried about what they would think and what they would do and just how they would react. So that was basically the reason why I didn't say anything to like a lot of people. And, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy because then I, st I had to get into my own mind zone. Like, you know something that might be my mom and that might be my dad and that might be so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, but I'm the person who is here and I'm the person that wants to be happy. If regardless, if I tell you guys or not, if I don't be with him because y'all don't want me to be with him, y'all still going to continue to live your life. Y'all going to be happy. And while meanwhile, I'm sitting here lonely and miserable because I want to be with somebody who I really want to be with. You know what I'm saying? But y'all over here happy and just la la land while April's over here like miserable because she's not with the person she wants to be with on account of you guys. Like I had to get in a mind frame, like, you know what? Not fuck everybody, but basically fuck them but not fuck everybody because it's me and I know who the fuck I am and I know who my husband is so regardless if you like it or not I don't give a shit sometimes I sometimes I don't give a shit and sometimes I do but the point is I don't give a shit because at the end of the day he's the one who makes me happy and as far as your parents go same scenario Barbara, it's you who's happy. You're the one that's about to be happy. You're the one who has found someone that's made you happy. As long as they respect you and your child, then that's all that matters. If he respects your family members, then that's great. Eventually, you are going to have to allow your parents to meet him, but you don't have to do it when they say it. You don't have to do shit on their terms, okay? And when you feel that it's time to tell them, then tell them, but don't feel like you need to force yourself to tell them because you're a grown-ass woman. You live in your own motherfucking place. You pay your own motherfucking bills. You take care of your own motherfucking child and yourself. So regardless of what anybody else thinks, that's your home, and you can let five motherfucking dudes live up in that bitch if you want them to. That Yo, shit, and you grown. Point blank, period. Now, those are your parents, true and deep. And I don't, we all have to respect our parents. That we, you know what I'm saying? Those are our parents. And I believe that everybody as a parent deserves respect, and every child deserves respect too. Regardless if you're a parent, your child deserves respect too. Just don't feel like because you're the parent that you ain't got to give respect. It goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? So, in due time, I would definitely let them know, like, hey, I, there's something I need to tell you guys. Um, I would wait until my divorce was final and then let them know. But either way, they're probably going to say something regardless. They're going to have to say something. And you know what? Be respectful to them. And, but at the same time, let them know, hey, I understand where you guys are coming from because you love me. That is the part that I understand because you love me and you are concerned for my well-being as well as my child's well-being. However, I am a woman and I really care for this person and they care for me as well. And I deserve happiness. I have been in a relationship for over seven years to where it wore me down. I wasn't being taken care of. I wasn't being taken care of financially, emotionally. I wasn't um, being attended to. Okay. And living like that is not correct. It's not right. I want what you and daddy have. You and daddy have a marriage and you love one another and you guys been together. And I want the same thing that you guys have. And I tried that with my ex-husband, but unfortunately he wasn't attentive. He wasn't the man that I thought he should have been. He wasn't the man that he should have been. And to that, this is the reason why we're not here. However, I have met someone and we have been seeing each other and he is the man. And hopefully you guys will change your minds about how you feel. But as a respectable daughter, I'm just coming to you and letting you know how I feel. And I don't want to have to hide anything for you. That's what you got to tell them. I'm pretty sure they should respect you because you have came to them as a woman. You are a woman. There is no reason for you to fear your parents. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. If they start going off, if your dad starts arguing, if your mom starts saying you're holier than thou and reading the scripts of the Bible or anything like that, you know what, honey? Pick up your belongings, your purse, your child, whatever you got going on there and say, you know what, mommy and daddy, I love you very much, but I'm going to leave right now because 
I wasn't here for all of this. I'm going to leave. And you leave. You walk out and you leave. Don't sit around arguing with them. Don't sit around combating with them. If they like, you know what I'm saying? If they are attacking you verbally, attacking you religiously, you don't have to sit there. You grown. You get in your car and you drive the fuck off to your own place of dwelling and be happy there. You don't have to be subjecting yourself to shit that you don't have to subject yourself to. You understand what I'm saying? You feel me? Like on some real shit, if it were me, I would say exactly what I said. I might not say it just like that. I might just, knowing me, I'd be like, hey, ma, I got a boyfriend. Or, you know, I wouldn't say it like that. But you know what I'm saying? I would tell her. And if she got upset and started yelling at me, you know what? I'd be like, listen, I'm grown. I'm not going to be here. And I'm not going to allow you to be yelling all in my ear. Or I'm just not, I'm not, mommy, listen, I love you. I love you to death. But I didn't come here for this. And I'll speak to you another time. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's how I would handle it. I'm not being disrespectful by leaving, but I'm not going to allow you to disrespect me either by just bashing me while I'm in your home. Just because you my mama and you feel like you have good intentions and you know everything doesn't make it right all the time. We grown now. We are adults. And you can listen to your mother. You can listen to your father all day if you want to. That's fine. That's great. That's what we do as children. We take people's advice. We take people's opinions and we evaluate the shit. But you don't have to sit there and listen to verbal abuse or anything like that. You tell them how you tell them. And then if that becomes an altercation, you know, you say your piece and you leave. That's it. That's it. It doesn't matter what you do in life. Some people are never going to be happy until you do exactly what they want to do. And I'm sorry, but that's not how life is. You know what I'm saying? There are some people, and I feel like bad for them, like who forced their kids to go to college or who forced their kids rather to be like a doctor or something. And here it is. This kid don't want to be none of that. You know what I'm saying? It's because your dad is a doctor. Your great granddad was a doctor. Your uncle is a doctor. So you're going to be a doctor. Like you don't do that. What if the kid wanted to be a producer or some shit or a model or whatever, or flip motherfucking burgers, whatever. This is their life. This is their goals. This is what they want to do. You cannot force somebody to do what you want them to fucking do because you want them to do it. And you feel like because you're the parent, this is what the fuck is good for you. It's not like that all the time. It doesn't go like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? It does not. It does not. It doesn't. We ain't gonna let our kids slip in between the cracks, but I'm damn sure not going to force you to become a doctor and you want to become a motherfucking lawyer or you want to, I'm forced you to become a doctor when you want to be a goddamn music producer or a clothes, a salesperson or a fashion designer. You never supposed to bash your kids dreams and goals and just reality is the reality is you never supposed to put your kids down and force them into something that you believe in you know what i'm saying you don't do that you just don't do that we as human beings all deserve respect i don't care if it's a five-year-old they deserve respect too if you're 35 years old you deserve respect just because my name is on your birth certificate does not give me the right to badger you like you know what i'm saying like listen i ain't gonna let my kids be no raggedy ass bums but I ain't going to force them to be something in their career that they don't want to do because I think it's good for them. Just because I think this shit is good for them don't mean it is. How are you going to force somebody to do something that they don't even want to do, which means they don't like the shit. Like, we don't do that. This is the real world. We are adults. And Barbara, let me tell you something, sweetheart. I will speak my piece. And if they want to argue me down... I'm out. Let the, let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. Not to them, but to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. I'm out about to sit here and take that badgering and verbal abuse from nobody. Tell them out of respect. That's all you owe them. It ain't because you want them to know your business it's out of respect. Some people don't even do that. Some women don't even tell their parents they're seeing somebody else because in reality, it's not really their business. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's your business. It ain't anybody else's business but yours. And if you feel the obligation to tell them when the time is right, then that's cool. But you ain't obligated to tell nobody. It's your business. Point blank, period. Like I said, tell them how when you feel the time is right. And if they badgering you, verbally abusing you, sweetheart, leave. Trust me, leave. You ain't got to call them the next day. Trust me, I'm pretty sure your mother is going to feel some type of way and reach out to you. But you don't have to sit around and take nobody's freaking verbal abuse because that's your parents. Just because your father's a know-it-all, he's not. And your mom, the super religious person, like, I, you know what? I'm not a super religious person at all. You know, I, 
I, I have my own beliefs. Okay. And that's what I, you know what I'm saying? I have my own beliefs and I have told you guys this before. I have my own beliefs and I don't believe in like what everybody else believes in. You know what I'm saying? Like everything the Bible says and stuff like that. I don't, I don't have those same beliefs. Like you don't know what God is. You really don't. And I'm not here for the religious talk anyway, but you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own beliefs, but you know what? I cannot stand when, like, I'm glad my mom is like not like that. And I'm glad my dad isn't like that, but I have had family members who are like that who, when you do something wrong, like if you tie your motherfucking shoe wrong, okay, they bring in religion into this. Like, so you're going to tell me that Jesus said to do it like that. Like, come on now. Like, you know what I'm saying? They, they badgering you with just Jesus or just religious beliefs and how you wrong for this. But here it is. You ain't no better. Like, who are you to judge somebody? Like, we, we're not here to judge people. Like, I'm way past that judging shit. Like, I don't do that shit no more. Like, because uh, maybe I do to a certain extent, but let me tell you something. I don't have time for the shit. I don't really give a fuck if you don't like me. I don't really give a fuck if you don't like what the fuck I do. I don't really care if you feel like I'm here for attention. I don't give a fuck. All right. I'm here because this is what the fuck I like to do. You know, like her little comment. Some people do anything for views and monies. Well, I'm sorry. I just put the wig on. What the fuck was I supposed to do, bitch? You know what I'm saying? Somebody always going to have their opinion. Just like everybody got an asshole, everybody got a motherfucking opinion. Some real shit. Everybody got a motherfucking opinion. We got to stop worrying about everybody else's opinions. We got to stop worrying about how they're going to react to shit. And we just going to have to worry about us. Us. That's what's wrong with the world today. We don't worry enough about ourselves. We're so worried about what other people think. That's why there's all this shit on social media and people always posting shit to social media and trying to show this and try to show that off. Just listen, let me tell you something. Don't do shit for people. Do it for yourself. If you want to wear some fake Nikes, wear them shits for you. Don't wear them for the people. Don't go out and spend $200 because everybody else is going to critique you and criticize you because you got on some fake Louis Vuittons. Wear that shit because that's what you want to wear and because you don't feel like spending $1,000 on some motherfucking pair of shoes, okay? Straight up. Stop worrying about what everybody else feel and react to and do you, boo, okay? Do you. So on the next note, we got one more and then we are going to move on. My God, my mouth is so dry. <clears throat> Hello, Miss April. My name is Miss L and I am 48 years old. I am the baby girl of seven siblings and my mother and I have been in separation again for the umpteenth time. I have not spoken with her since March. I love her to death, but I have been through entirely too much with her. All of my life since age 15, I have been bent over backwards, going above and beyond the call of daughter duties to take care of her, cater to her every need, spoil her, and more than I should have. I have been by her bedside every single time she has been sick and hospitalized, to and from appointments, groceries, and Miss April, none of my other siblings have ever lifted a finger to help her, nor me with her, and she treats them like gold, as if they do no wrong. I have done absolutely everything for my mother, everything, and every single time I get severely verbally abused. She's talked to me so bad and treated me so horrible to the point that I have became very suicidal. She has made me feel like I was beyond worthless, like I wasn't good enough, and everything I do for is never good enough for her is never good enough through my childhood after losing my father i was molested several times and she did nothing when i was 16 and seven months pregnant with my first child i was tortured with a gun held to my stomach and molested these situations happened by three step uncles and she did absolutely nothing but chose a man's money over the safety of her child and for a long time i tried i tried to hate her for it all but God wouldn't allow me to go for that. I'm scared for life, but I'm scared for life. I'm, but I'm scarred for life. The sad part is I forgave her for it all and spent years pretending to be okay. We used to have harsh words to one another until I got the wrath of God's punishments and I vowed that I would walk away rather than disrespect her. The previous mishap before March, I went over a year without a word because she wrote me the most hurtful letters and said some unforgivable things. But again, I forgave gave her because she got sick and hospitalized again and I knew she was going to need me. So I dropped everything and went back. 
After getting her all healed and better with God's huge help and strength, I thought things were going to be okay because we had a serious mother and daughter talk. Then in March, it was back to being verbally abusive and I walked away. This time it's April, I think it's the last. I was suicidal again, but I but help came came quick. I still to this day love my mother and I miss her, but I can't help but to love her from a distance. And if we ever get back on speaking terms, I have built some serious limits on how I will deal with her because I'm tired of the hurt and pain that I suffer with from my family. My family only contacts me when they want something or wants me to do things that they can't do for themselves. I'm the baby girl and the one who gets and and I'm the one who gets abused and used like that is all I'm here for. So when I felt like enough was enough, instead of blowing up and going off like I used to, I now shut myself off from everything and everybody to keep from lashing out. And during that closed off phase, I cry so much and so hard where I literally get sick. My question is, am I wrong for walking away to keep peace of mind? Am I wrong for shutting down to keep from being disrespected and from being disrespectful? I've tried talking. I've tried letters. I have tried everything, including trying to commit suicide again, because I'm at that point of being tired of trying to live at peace. My life story is a lot deeper than this, but I have already flooded your email with just a small, big portion. I love your videos, your hair and tutorials, and please keep it all going. Many blessings, much love and support and the utmost respect to you, Miss April. Thank you for taking the time to read my book and testimony. The greatest part of it all is that although I have several severe mental illnesses, the worst being major depressive disorder, severe anxiety, and severe insomnia, I'm still alive through all the tears, prayers, hurt, and pain, and I still find a smile every now and then. Thank you again. Sincerely, Miss L. Wow. And then she sent me a second one. One more thing. Here's what I used to look like. And I'm trying to find this in me again. I miss this me. Well, sweetheart, you beautiful. So you don't need to be worrying. Okay. You 48 years old and you look damn good for 48. So the new you, the you now looks perfectly fine to me, sweetheart. Okay. We all look at our older pictures and wish that we look like that. Shit, I do. I know I motherfucking do. Okay. But here's the thing. Now, see, this is kind of like the same scenario, but not really the same scenario. So basically, Miss L, she is the youngest out of seven. And out of all her six siblings, none of them lift a finger to help her mother, their mother, when she's sick, in need, need to go to appointments, need to go to the grocery store, being hospitalized. They don't help. They don't ask for help. For, they don't ask them, you need help. They don't ask Miss L, do you need help with mommy? They don't even bother. All they do is use and abuse her. And the same thing goes with her mother. So her mother has been verbally abusing to her, probably physical abuse to her. She has been molested. Her mother has not done nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's basically like her mother don't care. And on top of that, she has been suicidal because of all of the heartache the pain and just the abuse in her life. And you can't blame a person for feeling some type of way. Like, do the world care about me? Do these people care about me? Do the world care about me? Because sometimes they feel like when your family don't give a fuck about you, why makes you think that somebody else is going to care about you? Like, seriously, you know what I'm saying? So I understand the reason why she walked away. Is she wrong for walking away? Hell no. No, because even like I just said, if it's your mother, you deserve respect. And like she said, she has walked away to keep the peace and keep the peace to where not being disrespected and to be disrespectful. And I get that. That's what you have to do sometimes. I have walked away from my mother and we have not spoken for many months at a time. You know what I'm saying? And I have told you guys this because for one, just because you, my mother don't make it right for you to just disrespect me and say anything about what I do for a living or who I am or how I wear my makeup and hair or why I'm on YouTube and all this. That doesn't make it right just because you feel like you're my mother and that's what you don't like to do. That doesn't make it right. So I have to distance myself many times before from my own mother just because, you know what, I don't want to be disrespected and I'm not going to disrespect you. So on that note, I'm just going to cut myself off from you and just leave you alone. I have done that with not just my mom but with many family members okay because for one you're not gonna call me up when you need something and then when you don't need something and you doing all high and mighty and you want to go hang out you just decide to not hang out with me but to hang out with those people that weren't there for you i have to cut many people off and out of my life because i don't have time for that shit you know what i'm saying i am not about to let no motherfucker wear me the fuck down okay it's sad when you have to cut your own family off because the word is family so when you feel like 
like they not treating you right or you feel like real fucked up in general, that's fucked up because that's supposed to be your family and they supposed to be there for you and they supposed to lift you up and hold your hand and be there for you mentally, you know what I'm saying, emotionally. And as your family, the key word family, they can't even do that. So that makes you start to feel like, why the fuck should I trust you over here when I can't even trust my own family members? You know what I'm saying? So I get that. Sometimes it ain't even just family. Let me tell you something. Don't put yourself out there and embarrass yourself and belittle yourself and stoop down low to anybody else's characteristics because that's what the fuck they do. You know what I'm saying? I find myself a lot of times, <clears throat> just like that fucking message on YouTube, I could have went off and just belittled her or said what the fuck I had to say to her. But no, you know what I'm going to do, sweetheart? I'm going to kill you with some kindness and some knowledge and walk away from it. I'm not about to come out of my character because you out yours are just, that's not even, you're not even out your character, bitch. That's how you are in general. You know what I'm saying? The same thing goes for Miss L's mother. That's how her mother is. Don't bring yourself out to allow her miserable ass make you miserable. Like, let me tell you something. The best thing to do sometimes is to walk away from people. That's just like in general. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some people feel like I'm not about to walk away from her. Oh, she wants to argue, bitch. We about to argue. You never know what the situation may come to. You know what I'm saying? You standing there arguing with your mother. She may have a heart attack. Something may be wrong with her. And you know what I'm saying? Or you having an argument with somebody in the street that's really not even worth it. And then you lose your life or they lose your life or y'all bitches go to jail. Sometimes you have to walk away from people like on some real shit because just, you know what? Just be the bigger person. Like I know like sometimes with me, I, I walk away from some shit sometimes. Not because I want to, but because I got kids to think about. And then I'll be like, you know what, bitch? You know you got a record. And you've been in jail. So um, you've been arrested enough times. Um, bitch, you best not to be arguing with nobody because out here they will put you in some handcuffs, okay? So it's best to walk away from this belligerent ass bitch because she's not even worth your time and energy, okay? And on top of that, bitch, don't embarrass yourself and belittle yourself and make yourself look stupid because she's standing here looking stupid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have had to walk away from many people. Like this one time, I think I told you guys about it in Sam's Club. I had on my red wig that I had got from RPG show and I was with Mum's DNA. And it was this dark skin, um, she's not dark skin, she's brown skin. And um she well, it doesn't even matter what color she was. It was this black girl, and I hate to say that, but you know, this one of my own people, okay? She was with her I don't know if that was her boyfriend or whatever he was to her, but she came towards me and started smiling and then was like, Oh, your hair is cute, where you get it from? Like, I just looked at her like, What? Where did I get it from? And walked off because, bitch, you don't have to be so fucking, um, like, who does that? Like, I don't know. I just, me personally, I would have just been like, your hair looked really nice. And left it at that. Not been like, where you get it from? Like, really though? Did you just really come at me like that? Like, the other part, I just was like, what? Where did I get it from? And then I looked at her and was like, Shh, and walked off. I thought it was really rude. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you would have just said, you know, I really like your hair. Would you mind telling me where you got it from? Or, you know, or... Hey, I really like your hair. Basically, I really like your hair. Um, do you mind me asking, is it a weave or is it your hair? Something like in that perspective. Not like where you get it from. Like, damn, bitch, how do you even know if it wasn't mine or not? What if it was growing out of my motherfucking scalp? Either way, the way she came at me was so rude. And, you know, me as a person, I could have just been like, what, bitch? I could have like went off of her, but you know something? I just looked at her and was like, Psh, bye. Did the bitch call me bougie? Sweetheart, I'm far from bougie. I'm far from bougie. But I do walk away from motherfuckers who are ignorant because you know why? I know the type of person I am and I'm not about to give you the time of day. You already ignorant and fucking stupid. So I'm not about to lower myself for your fucking, for your dumb ass. I'm not about to do that. A lot of people feel like I'm not about to walk away because I ain't no chump. I, I feel like that too. Sometimes my husband has to tell me, quit it. You're not a chump. Sometimes you just got to walk away from people because you're older, you're more mature, and these people are not worth it. Let me tell you something, Miss L. That might be your mother, and you may love her to death with all your heart. However, you have to love yourself first. And if you felt suicidal on any occasion from your mother, the best thing for your own sanity and your own health is to stay away from those people that make you feel that way. It's a shame that you have to. Um, 
you know, separate yourself from family and friends oh, that like, you know what I'm saying, treat you and make you feel lower than a person. But you know what? I guarantee you that you as a person, you will find happiness regardless if it's with your family members or friends that, you know what I'm saying? You have to do you. Like, this is what it's all about. Let's do us. Like, for real. That's her mother. I get it. But listen. If somebody is verbally and mentally abusing you, would you want to be around them? It, I don't give a fuck who you are. Would you want to be around them? And if they are making you feel like you want to take your own life, would you want to be around them? Now, look, she's religious. She may not. I'm not sure if Miss L is super religious, but I know she how she feels about God because she has written that. And that's how she feel about it. OK. And if that's what makes her feel better and that's what brought her back to reality and has brought her out of the darkness, this sweetheart, do not bring yourself to Satan. OK, stay away from the dev the devil. Stay away from the motherfucking devil. OK, because he is a lie. All right. And it's sad that you have to feel that way about your own mother and to distance yourself from her. But you know what? If you don't, you're going to be the one who's in the um, in the padded room. OK, with your hands tied behind your back because she didn't drove you to the point where you tried to take your own life. Let me tell you something. Life is way too short way, 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 way too short to live miserably and unhappy. Okay. There are so many people in the world that don't speak to their parents only because of certain reasons like this, or that because their parents are just evil and me. And don't you think it's hard for them to walk away? And then there are some people in the world whose parents are evil and me, and they just killed their motherfucking asses because they couldn't take it no more. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I watch all the motherfucking unsolved mysteries and all the crime channels and shit. that be my shit. But you don't want to be one of those people and you damn sure don't want to be one of those people that's sitting in that padded room in the fucking mental hospital because you allowed your mother to fucking drive you insane. Miss L. Miss L for Miss Love. Okay, Miss Love? Love yourself. Don't worry about your mother. She will be okay. All right? She will be fine. If you want to check on her, that's great. But don't put yourself in a situation where you know it's toxic for you point blank period. You're not wrong for walking away, sweetheart. You would have been wrong for staying and allowing her to fucking drive you insane. That's what you would have been wrong for. And instead of being disrespectful and being disrespected, you're doing the right thing, the mature thing, the woman thing. Listen, like I said, we all have to walk away sometimes from our best friends, our friends, our family members, our mama, our daddy, our cousins, whoever. Sometimes we have to walk away from our bosses just because I'm on the verge of cussing your ass the fuck out. So I'm going to just walk away because I'm not going to allow me cussing you out to, you know, fuck up my paper. Okay. And just like me, I walk away from people a lot because I'm not, I'm not about to fucking get my, my fucking blood pressure rose because of your dumb ass girl. Bye. You're not even worth my time. Like girl, bye. All right. Seriously. Bye bitch. Bye. I'm just saying. So you guys, on that note, I'm going to go get me some water because my mouth is like dumb dry. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Make sure that you know you send me your real talks so that way, you know, we can hash it out. I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. And yes, you guys, if you're wondering about the hair that I'm rocking, it is the hair from Amanda Hair, all right? And this was the kinky straight um, hair that they sent me, um, three bundles and a lace frontal, but uh, this is only two bundles because it was more than enough. And it's 20, 20, 18, and a um, 16 or 14 inch frontal, but it's super long because it's, you know, it's, it's a bundle, but girl, I'm loving this hair. So I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Happy 4th of July for you guys. I hope you guys have a safe and happy 4th of July. A great time. Be safe. Don't get too drunk. Drink something for me, but don't get too turned up. But just be, but most importantly, be very safe. So I love you guys. And I'll see you soon. Peace. Bring it on, trap, shit.